Hey, I'm John from First Updates Now and here in the Las Vegas Regional. And I'm here with 4421 Forge Robotics from Alberta, Canada. Here we're going to be running through their intake, their tensioner, and some of their cool things that they got going on with their swerve drive and their telescoping arm. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. I'm here with uh, Sanjay to talk about a little bit more about the intake. I see, like, really love it. Really love how you guys designed it. No, tell me a little bit more about it and what you guys chose and why you guys chose it. Yeah, so originally at the start of the season, we were actually going through many different intake concepts and we were actually considering a lasso type intake, right? And this is just kind of what we settled on with a set of wheels for the cubes and another set of compliant wheels for the cones, right? And so we're running with entrapment stars for the cubes because we, uh, we saw that they're actually gripping it more like reliably than the normal compliant wheels and because they weren't too grippy with these normal compliant wheels they're really grippy and they're good for a compressible thing like a uh, cone but we ran with the cubes and with the cones right we're actually running slightly worn compliant wheels instead of brand new because with the brand new compliant wheels we feel we not we, we see that it grips it too much and so we after like letting them wear a little bit we see that the grip is actually really nice for actually scoring on the uh, the poles. Mm -hmm. And so we are also running a Neo 550 with a spark on this. Our entire robot only has brushless motors this year, right? And so we're running a Neo 550 with a 21 to 1 and, and on a intake that doesn't have a hinge. For the first regional, we had a hinge, but we saw that that was causing a little bit more problems than it was helping us with. So we got rid of the hinge. And so if we actually look at the internals of the in, uh, the intake over here, we, we have nice like cable guide and support like like small 3 8 tech shaft so we can actually put a, a spark in then it would go up through here and use the cable chain to run down the robot into the uh onto the base of the robot and so that's really the general run out of our intake awesome awesome love it and can you tell me a little bit more about like the tensioner here i see a really really thick must be going crazy. How, yeah. uh, how does that work? So that's a 47 pound spring and we are pulling it down with two Neos that are both 15 to ones on a winch. And so they're both connected to what we're calling the forearm plates, right? So these just kind of do everything that we need to do in this region. We, so they're attached to the bottom section of forearm plates and the spring is attached to the top. And so now the spring will just pull it up while the motors pull it down. This also holds the end of a, uh, a cable holder and also a third spring for the thrifty telescoping tube. Right. It attaches to the two inch tube via just compression of these bolts and we've engraved 4421 in it. Awesome, great. Yeah. And now, Nathan, could you, moving on to Nathan, uh, could you tell me a little bit more about like kind of what, you, what happened with the winch process and then I guess a little bit more about the internal system? Because, you know, Sanjay mentioned a lot about the wiring and that's really unique, uh, especially going through a telescope on, on top of the telescope. How does that work? Mm -hmm. Certainly, we are using the uh, ThriftyBot telescoping tube, but immediately we ran into the problem about the stock down blocks of ride. Beautiful machining job they did, but it's designed for upwards motion, linear, instead of outwards. And so we ended up running into a problem where there's a ton of friction. And so this is the stock Thrifty block. And so I actually designed this block, which uses bearings. And so when we're at an angle, we no longer run into the issue of where we have binding in the tube. And then this combined with the third spring, as Sanjay pointed out, allows really smooth motion. And then coming along to the back, we're running our winch system on the internal tube with a 15 to 1 90 degree drive. And then we're also using the same winch motor as our pivot point. And so allowing us complexity as well as simplicity at the same time. 
along with another thing I want to point out is that we have ramp cheaters, we like to call them, where we actually machined a, about a half inch thick aluminum plate down to put these Delrin wheels right here, which allow us to uh, prime the ramp into the 11 degree angle so our bumpers no longer get caught up before the, our swerve drive can drive us up. Awesome, very unique. I haven't seen that at all this competition, but I love it. So now moving on to Mateo, do you want to give, uh, saw some great, great things going on with mechanical stuff, but do you guys have any uh, presets or you guys do anything with the arm to make sure you guys can get the high notes and cubes, correct? All right, so what we do is we have two, multiple different set points for the three main pieces we score. So first off, we have our set point for our cube, our cone. And what this will do is this allows us to, um, this allows us to get into position to align up our cone just above the um, scoring position. And then when we want to, um, when we want to score, we just simply have to press two buttons and we go down into the scoring position for the cone and then back up. The other position we have is um, the top of the, um, the top of the arm, which is where we run around and so we can't get any penalties. And then we can also go to a third position, which is meant for the high cube. So there is four separate positions that are enabling us to efficiently score pieces in either the um, mid or high for the um, cube and just the mid for the cone. Um, the other features we have, and those are done with actively with these limit switches um, or proximity limit switches, which detect when this comes by, which is the purpose of these um, of these guide rails, is to make this a specific distance away from our proximity sensor. Um, along with that, we have a, some auto code, which is used, which now uses odometry in order to correct for um, our path. So we have a command that's designed in order to get from uh, our point A to point B, so we tell it our desired end output, and that desired end output allows us to actually get to that position with a little bit of drift on our odometry calculation, um, so that we can have set points on the field where we can just say, go to here, and then we can just reach that exact position every time. Um, another, in so the, another interesting portion is, is we have our basic auto balance code, and then um, there's a full, properly coded swerve drive this season. Awesome. And so with all these uh, presets, I'm assuming you guys do that for auto as well. Uh, Is there yeah, anything special about that? Um, not particularly. We just set um, when it finishes, and then we just move on to the next thing. And those presets are... It, what made it really nice is that we use the same presets for teleop and auto, mm -hmm. so we can do the exact same motion for both. So if one reliable, both are going to be reliable. And then as well, we use our limit switches to reset our position of our encoder so it'll be more accurate without any drift throughout the match. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks for having us on First Updates Now. Good luck. Best of luck to Team 4421 Forge Robotics from Canada, Alberta, here at the Las Vegas Regional. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash FIRST updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash firstupdatesnow. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash firstupdatesnow. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.